Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I am going to be talking about the new NVIDIA app. If you don't know what that is, let me explain to you. So for the last 20 years, this has been how we set up everything on the NVIDIA graphic cards, okay? So this app that looks like it came out of Windows 9, uh, Windows XP to be honest, but you know, it, it looks even older um so ever since then this app is is useful it does what it's supposed to do but it looks old and is a very very slow right now it's going to be probably faster because i've been opening and closing some uh, areas and the, it, that when you open or reopen an area is faster but when you go to new areas it's going to take a while so before you had to go to image setting manage 3d settings let's go change ECC, all the options, you had to do it here. If you go to change resolution, view HDCP, look, I haven't opened that one and you saw how long it took. If you go to adjust desktop and size, look, it, it takes a little bit of time, which shouldn't look how um, slow this app is. Look, you go here and believe me, this is faster because I have already opened all this area. So it's very functional. It does everything it needs to do, but it's a slow, it's... it's <sighs> It's annoying, you look, it's, you want to change something. For example, if I click here, look how long it takes before it does anything. And this is a very fast machine. Um, I've been playing with the app for a little bit before um, recording this, so it's faster uh, right now than it is when you just open it. So for 20 years, this has been the app that every person using a GeForce uh, or NVIDIA car has been using to change the settings, okay? But a couple of days ago, NVIDIA released the new NVIDIA app, which is an app that is going to replace eventually everything that you see here. Right now, still, you need this app and this will be installed because like 90% of the options are still here in this old application but the idea is that the new app is going to be replacing this completely and one of the reasons many uh, users has been complaining about this with to nvidia for a long long time me included is because as i said it's an old app it looks bad and uh, it's a slow and amd has a much better um software adrenaline to control every option so well after many years of waiting nvidia finally released the nvidia app which is the one you're looking here and i'm going to put the link to download it in the description if you already have the e4 experience installed it's gonna upgrade it and it's not gonna change anything of your shortcuts or anything like that so that's a very good thing right okay cool so let me explain what this new app is and does okay the first thing is as here you can see i'm logged in um, and you for experience you need to log in in order to download or update drivers but that doesn't happen anymore with the new nvidia app i am logged in because i already have an account and i have no issues with that but i know a lot of people didn't want to use the g4 experience because they didn't want to use an account or login or etc etc so now you don't have to okay that's important you don't have to i am because i have an account and i don't care but you don't have to so uh that that's one big step for many people that don't like that sort of things and um, also for me because i test so many computers that it's very annoying when i want to install the g4 experience and i have to log in in each one of them now i don't need to do that which is quite good so the the, the main app as you see have some information here which is like very interesting i'll say you know it, if they put any news in here you can have it already here which is good i think now here you're going to see your library as you remember that uh, the nvidia uh tends to scan your computer for the game that you have installed and then you can optimize the games from there okay for example if i go here you can either press play or settings and when you go to settings i'm going to show you in a little bit what it's all about the other nice part about the main home area is this uh, discover area right here because it is going to show you some tools that nvidia has available and tools that you have installed for example i don't have g4 now but you can get it now right from here i have nvidia broadcast i'm using it right now for this and it's, as you can see here it's telling me to open it if i want to and i can get the universe hit but for example this nvidia canvas i use and i have installed and it has detected and it's telling me to update it which is very good because normally uh, i had to go to the website to check if nvidia broadcast has updated if icat has updated and so on so now i can know without having to go to each website and check the version that is available that 
that was very annoying. So that's for me is a win. Now, when we go to the drivers area, you know, you can update your drivers directly from this app as you used to do on G4 Experience. Or if you didn't use G4 Experience, well, let me know. You, the, le I, I let you know, you can update your driver from here. And from here, you can select what type of driver you use, the game ready driver or the studio driver. The studio driver are driver that are, are more stable and are, um, are more for people that uses the computer to work. You can play, of course, but they are more optimized for that. Okay. And they are not as up to date as the GeForce game ready driver. One good thing about this area now is that it's going to tell you what's new from the new driver. Already up to date, but you can see here, this is the latest driver and it's telling me the new features that I can get from this driver, what uh, the optimal settings for new games and what's been fixed from previous drivers. So you can get all of that here, which is, uh, I think quite good that now we can have that information there because before you had to look for the logs or uh, find on forums and find out what was the new things that were fixed. So that's a very good thing that NVIDIA has done here. Now we go to the meaty or one of the best part of the whole thing. As you can see here, we have all the these options, okay? All the games that it has a scan that this is the same as the NVIDIA control panel. We don't have all the options yet. As I said, this is a beta app and it's, you know, moving along, but it's very stable and I will recommend anyone to use it. But anyway, the whole point is that if we go to something like Cyberpunk, for example, you can see first thing, we have all these things here. You see, we can get ambient occlusion and what the game is optimized according to this, because it's going to give you like some recommendations to, um, do better in terms of graphics or depending on your configuration of PC. And it's going to tell you to put some things like a, you see, for example, here I'm using quality, but it says that it recommends ultra performance, which I am not going to use ultra performance. I don't have frame generation and, and it, it telling me to update it. I don't have, uh, well, I do have the reconstruction and so on. So that's was the last uh, thing I tested. If you go to the bottom, you're going to see some of the uh, normal uh, features that the game has. And here are two new features that are included. Let's go to global settings. So here is the all the options you can change per game. Okay, like use 3D application setting, the performance, the uh, max frame rate. And if I go to global settings, I have the same option here. So here I can do uh, so, uh, game by game and here global. So on global, I have activated RTX Dynamic Vibrance and RTX HDR. That is new features including with the app. So what are these two features? What well, dynamic vibrance is a way to make the game, let's just say, more colorful and luminous to color in a way. And you can adjust those. But when I say colorful, it's not your typical saturation. It's more an intelligent way of go making the color pops more, but without oversaturating them. And, you know, depending on what the image is, it's very good. I love the look of it, depending on the game. I was playing Avatar with this and it looks amazing. It makes everything pop and looks much better. That will depend on, of course, on what you like or dislike about. But I think this does a very good job and you can adjust it once you're in game. You can open the filters and change the options for that. OK, so that's very good. But you have to have it activated before going into game. I don't know if it's a bug or a, because I wanted to make a video to show you the difference. Um, but so far, I have not been able because once I get into the game and I play a little bit with that or I turn it off for a second just to, you know, take two sh screenshots, then I cannot activate it back. So that's a, an issue I'm, I'm having. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it's the only thing that I have found. The RTX HDR is basically the uh, same thing as Auto HDR from Windows, but better. I have to say much better to the point where I'm using that even for Avatar, which is a game that already has HDR as a part of the game. So it's this idea, the, the RTX HDR, the idea is to add HDR to, to games that don't have it, but it's so good that I prefer it to even the, uh, at least in the Avatar game to the native implementation. Uh, Digital Foundry did a video about it. If you haven't looked at, uh, look at it, because this is very, very good. But as you can see, it's not active. There is two reasons for that in this particular computer. One is because I don't have HDR at this precise moment active. 
okay, on my monitor. But the second one is because I have three monitors. And unfortunately for now, according to NVIDIA, I can use this with multi-monitor. Somebody asked on Twitter then if they are going to allow this to work with multiple monitors and they said yes. Why this is not implemented yet? And I think it's such an important feature because most people use one the more monitor. Um, but I'm not sure, but at some point uh, they are going to activate it and that's what they say. So unfortunately I cannot use it here, but I do use it on my other PC connected to my TV. So that's a very good. And as you can see, you can activate this on a global preference or go here, for example, and activate it game by game. Okay. And you can select those sort of options. So th those two things are very good in this version, but that's not the only thing we have here. There is more. This redeem is an old thing where you can redeem like, um, Key, uh, keys for maybe you bought a card that has like a promo with the game or something, that sort of things. And Nvidia from time to time, but it's very rare. I don't even know why they care because um, they give you like some, um, I don't know, uh, some XP boost and stuff for, like that, or maybe an item in game, things like that. But honestly, look, they, they barely use this functionality. Uh, and on settings where you have all the typical settings, all the, you know, the normal stuff that you can get, okay? Okay, so let's go home and now let's show you more options that are included here. So here now we have the gallery. This gallery here allows you to see the latest thing you have taken pictures of and videos and so on and so on and so on. So I've been uh, recording a lot of things lately. Uh, here, these are me trying to do the... Um, uh, RTX Vibrance, as you can see here, right? This is with Vibrance and without Vibrance. So you can see that it's more like more colorful and so on. But as I said, it's not like one setting. You can adjust how much Vibrance you want or don't want to, okay? Um, but as you see, it's, it's a problem because I it's not working uh, right for me at the moment. But there is a couple of nice things that are coming from here, which, for example, let's go to statistics. If we can now activate the statistics, you see, um, and you can use whatever is that you want from here, like GPU clock, GPU voltage, uh, and just set it up there. That's quite nice and interesting, but that's not the only thing good about this is you can set it up wherever you want. Look at this. Oh my goodness. But you don't like linear. You can have it like this or like this. So you can have as much info as you want. The only thing I'm missing here is the possibility to either change the font or change the color of the font, which is not available. At least I haven't been able to find it. And here it shows you also how you want that sort of um, icons and things to appear. You want in the bottom right, you want there, you want here, you can set it up from here. And the visibility, as you can see, you can put it enhanced or standard. So I think that's the thing that is too much. Sometimes I would like to keep it like this, but maybe on green and with the uh, background. So, um, but you see it changes and that's the thing I don't like about this. Uh, I wish that you could change it. Uh, the other part that is um, new here, and I like it, and you're going to see in a second, uh, if I remember where it is, is we go to settings here, uh, and we go to video capture. Look, do you see what's nice about this? Well, the whole thing is different. As you can see now, it just comes on the side instead of in the middle of the screen as it used to. But here you can see now that I can select 120 FPS, guy. Finally, the NVIDIA app is allowing you to record at 120 FPS, which you couldn't before, you were limited to 60 FPS. Now you can. The resolution on the game is the same. You can go up to 8K. The quality is co as custom or high. And the bit rate has been now up to 250 megabits. Before it was up to 150, but now we can go up to 250. 150 megabit that's to obviously to accommodate that you want the better quality or also if you are using 120 fps obviously you will need more bitrate to keep the quality sharp so that's a great use uh, for many things that normally we want to capture and we uh, were always limited to 60 now we can go up to 120 so that's a very good um for now if we go to the game filters i cannot activate them because i'm not in the in any game but here as you can see you have rtx dynamic vibrance and rtx hdr so when you are in game because i have the global setting set to on for rtx dynamic vibrance this will be on top active so then you can open this right with 
the same option as before, add F3 or whatever key you want to assign to it. And then you can adjust these two parameters if um, you have them active. The thing is that when I set the parameter to zero, for example, and then I close it, take a picture and come back, I cannot change anything anymore. So it's like it once it's turned off, you cannot turn it on inside the game. And that's a problem for me to make that video that I was saying before. So that's some... Um, that's unfortunate here that I cannot do that. So that's, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a bug or what it, it is that is happening. So RTX that I'm vibrance, you can activate it here, go up and down. And if you, you can remove it completely while in game. So it will uh, keep your uh, game um, colors and everything. And then you cannot add it back. Uh, that's at least what's happening to me. I don't know if they are going to correct that or it's something that only works the moment you launch the game. So, but this is essentially the new NVIDIA app, guys. Um, so far, I think it's a very good uh, a step in the right direction. I'm quite happy that NVIDIA is doing this. And this was uh, just um, launched without, you know, nobody knew this was coming, at least not that I know. So they, they just launched it and I'm quite happy with the changes and I hope they, they you know, it's a fast thing that by the end of the year maximum, we already have everything set up in this app and we can forget about the old NVIDIA control panel. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you liked this video. It was very informational for you. And as always, if you like this, so just please click like, subscribe and all those things. Help me to get to a thousand subscribers, please. I'm dying to get to a thousand here. So uh, I, I will really appreciate it. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.